Alright, hello and welcome to another video in the Tools Explained series. Today we'll be going over the masking module, uh, which is in the scene right now. So let's start, get started. Um, so this is the tool right here, and the main purpose of this thing is to take nearly all attributes from the um, landscape before us and export it to um, files on disk. So let's delete this one in the scene so we can get through the process right from the start. So what you do is you drag it in, um, and when it shows up initially, it's going to take a while, it's going to have all this code in here, uh, which you don't want to worry about, so if you, you'll have to rebuild the thing. Now you might, when you scroll down, run into this issue where you can't go down any further. You just have to manually grab this thing and pull it down a bit. So we're just going to click Rebuild Asset, and this will um, recreate the asset, so it's going to update it and most of those settings will be fixed. So if we scroll up again, all these, there's no code anymore and we just have our normal interface. So um, yeah, there's a couple of buttons immediately that you can uh, use to reset your tool if necessary. So if the set objects, that is for this. So here there's um, four objects, even though there's nothing, that's because the tool defaults to that. So if we click set objects, it is going to change and now there's only one object and that's what the set object button does it basically is a manual button for checking how many objects you have imported into the tool and will do as such the reset values will well, reset the values so let's say we change this to 10 and this to 30 it's going to take a little bit just didn't type it properly there we go and if we reset values it's going to put it to zero um, the reset loop cache is for when your objects don't show up correctly. So in case, for instance, I set this object to be a certain thing in the tool and it doesn't do that properly, you just want to hit that button and it'll uh, fix it for you. So let's get to the main feature of this tool, which is the object importing. So to do this, we first want to select our landscape, which can do right here, which is the first input. You just hit the landscape and it'll grow right ahead and import the landscape. For the second section, we want to import the um, geometry in our scene. So you want to hit geometry input and then we, you want to use world outliner input. Now this is going to give you a little screen like this and if you hit start selection, um, it's going to lock this panel here and I'll be able to select my assets. So as you can see here, I'm have a bunch of things prepared. So I'm going to hit the foliage, general mask, and then three uh, areas that are populated. And when we hit current selection, you can see that they appear right in here. It's going to take a little bit and there it is. So if we scroll up and do set objects, it's going to cook for a little bit and there we go. Our objects have been set. Now the order we selected our objects in is going to determine how you edit them. So here we have number one, two, three, four, five. And that basically went through this list. No. Through this list. So foliage is one, general mask is two, and then populated one, two, three is three, two, five. So let's actually close this. I thought I'd be able to close just the one thing, but oh well. So let's read through this once more so we have foliage, general mask and then a populated areas and then we can close this so we have easier access to the bottom areas so again mask uh, foliage and then it's gonna take a little while and then we have three populated areas so that's a village in this case so it's gonna take a little while to do that And it's done. There we go. So that's done. Now, that's basically the masking tab. That's the first of three tabs. Now, when we go to the second one, we're presented with two more tabs, the mask editing and the mask export options. Now, we'll get to this later because that's basically where most of the stuff is going to happen. Um, in here, we have a couple of additional masks we can apply. So, for instance, the direction mask. Uh, this will apply a mask given a certain direction. So the current goal angle is zero, and that takes the X axis as a front. So everything that is pointing with this direction is going to be added to this mask. Uh, we have an erosion path. So if we select this, it's going to 
take a short while and there we go it's going to do 20 frames of erosion um, more parameters for this will be following uh, like how heavy the erosion is is just currently the time uh, but let's leave it on this for now and then a option to shrink or expand all masks but we'll have a look at that in a second so let's go to export options and we're presented with the small little interface so the um, software button is not something that you should be worrying about because it basically determines whether you have Houdini uh, and in the Houdini option you can there we go you can set the resolution yourself and in the Unreal option um, there's already a bunch of predetermined resolutions you can use for exporting to me the 1009 by 1009 option looks good so I'm just going to use that for export I actually already have a path prepared now actually before we do this Let's have a look at this so you can choose a file. Um, this is a glitch in the um, Houdini engine and a real interaction because this is really meant to select a um, folder, not a file. So when you have this thing here, it is asking you to select a file, but you can't because this folder is empty because you're exporting a map to this. So just write any name, it doesn't matter. And when you hit that, it's going to import the location and you'll have what you need so um, yeah and it won't take this temporary .txt it won't it doesn't matter I personally like to do a txt file because if you do a dot file it might refer to something else and yeah so um, it didn't spawn a different height field this time or actually it did uh, so if we open up our world outliner a bit you can see that it made a second landscape this one is exactly the same as the um, the old one so if you remove this it's gonna be the exact same actually we have to remove the top one it's gonna be completely dark though because it's fully occluded by um, the original landscape if you fly around a bit you can fix that um, but yeah we don't need this landscape so you can also just delete it um, pesky thing though it will keep coming back because Houdini keeps recooking the tool and keeps re-adding it but yeah let's just hit save to disk and see what happens so it is going to take a short while. Now, as you might have noticed, I just made a small cut. Uh, that is because the resolution I had for have for my landscape combined with the um, large erosion time of 20 frames, it basically just took a little while. Um, if you have a lower landscape size, this shouldn't take too long, but um, yeah, here we have the output masks. So let's get started with our um, um, let's get started with our um, object defined masks. And let's actually quickly press G in the scene here. There we go. So if we look at these, we have our populated area, our general mask, and our foliage mask. And immediately looking at this, it seems I made a little bit of a mistake. Um, because it seems that the general mask and the population mask or the foliage mask were um, uh, mixed up so yeah that's that's a mistake on me but yeah as you can see the tool exported everything properly so here we have the thing in the bottom we have our general mask in the center here the populate mask now as you can see this shows a bit of overlap um, that is done by the tool itself to indicate where multiple objects well are overlapping um, this can be adjusted in the tool itself but that's basically a low level function and for now I'll leave it like this because it shouldn't matter too much and this can be useful information now the additional masks generated were generated either by the um, the erosion pass or just the, the, um, the tool itself. So here we have the direction mask I was talking about, which basically points in a certain direction. Here we have a debris mask. This is done by the erosion pass. So you can see uh, where the debris ended up after the erosion pass was done. Uh, the flow mask very closely follows the debris path because, um, well, it dedicates where water has flown and debris usually follows the water in erosion. Here we have that foliage mask. It also exports a height mask after the erosion pass. So you'll be able to re-import this if necessary or use this for something else. 
And then here we have the slope mask. Now the slope mask, let's actually really quickly make sure that we have the terrain in view whilst looking at the slope mask. There we go. So the slope mask looks at which areas are flat and colors those. So the flatter an area is, the more likely it's to be on this map. And then finally we have a map that dictates the water or where water ended up after the erosion pass. And that will be all the masks generated by the masking module for now. Uh, in the masking section there's a lot of different uh, passes you can apply. For instance a road option or a noise pass. Now if we select this noise pass it's going to take a little while to calculate. But then we get a noise options interface and this basically allows you to mask out certain different types of noises you would maybe want to apply or um, what different type of textures you want in there. Um, this will also apply a noise pass so if we hit this which was for the second object there we go so as you can see it regenerated a um, landscape but it didn't apply a noise pass um, that is because this tool isn't meant for applying noise passes this will happen in the main tool so once the main tool is made you'll be able to see those noise passes in all their glory so to say um, and now for the final tab in the interface the bug reporting tab this will be implemented uh, in all tools preferably as it will serve as a means to report your bugs. So you'll be able to select the person, the priority, what the issue is, a short description and how to recreate it, and even your engine version, hit send, and you'll be able to send your report. So that about concludes um, this video. If there's any more questions, feel free to either hit me up on Discord or leave a question in the video description. Thank you very much for watching, and until the next video.